This is Jason Moreno along with Elaine Tsai and Chris Webb, Texas State University DPT class of 2014. We're going to talk to you about thoracic spine fractures. Common causes for T-spine fractures include osteoporosis, trauma, and tumors. Risk factors include increased age, females osteoporosis, patients with increased fall risk, and long-term steroid use. This chart shows the incidence of vertebral fractures between men and women. As you can see, there is an increase in women over men, and it increases over the age of 65. Fractures. Thoracic fractures include compression bursts, which fall into a flexion pattern, flexion distraction, which fall into an extension fracture pattern, and fracture dislocations, which fall into a rotation fracture pattern. Compression fractures affect the anterior column of the vertebrae and is caused by an indirect hyperflexion and bending force. This is one of the most common osteoporotic related fractures. Burst fractures affect the anterior and middle columns. They can affect the posterior column, but it's rare. Axial loading can result in fracture of both end plates, fracture of the superior end plate, which is most common, fracture of the inferior end plate, burst rotation, and burst lateral flexion. Flexion distraction fractures affect the anterior, middle, and posterior columns. It's caused by a flexion distraction force, such as a seatbelt injury, and can be bony or ligamentous in nature. A fracture dislocation is a displacement of a vertebra off of an adjacent vertebra. This type of fracture can cause compression of the spinal cord and can lead to further sequela depending on the severity of the fracture. Your patient may present asymptomatic. They may have some localized tenderness, decreased range of motion, neurological signs and symptoms, some slow gait patterns, vertebral deformities, impaired pulmonary function, chronic back pain. Your patient may also present with injuries in close proximity such as sternal scapular rib or clavicular fractures. For the diagnosis of thoracic spine fractures, imaging of some type is needed. X-rays, CT, and MRI scans are often used. X-rays can be used to diagnose the initial thoracic fracture and can also be used to view union during the healing process. However, X-rays cannot be used to identify bridge callus. CT scans can be used to confirm bridge callus, but however, carry a high radiation burden. Therefore, MRI scans have the advantage of assessing any uh, ligamentous or soft tissue damage as well as confirming bridge callus without the high radiation burden. For differential diagnosis you want to make sure that you screen for cancer as it can manifest as thoracic back pain and as well as visceral referred pain from renal cardiac and pulmonary systems. Prognosis for thoracic spine fractures vary with uh, type of fracture and the extent of the fracture. However, women with vertebral compression fractures are at risk to develop another one within the next year. And also, patients over 65 suffering from compression fractures have an increased mortality rate. And fractures due to osteoporosis often result in chronic pain and disability. However, compress simple compression fractures due to trauma typically heal between 8 to 10 weeks with conservative treatment. For the cervical spine fractures, we have the C-spine rule algorithm. However, we do not have the same algorithm for thoracic spine fractures. O'Connor and Walsham have created an algorithm, as you can see, which is similar to the C-spine classification. Um, a positive indication in any one of these categories would refer for imaging. However, this is based on a low level of evidence, and more research is, in, is needed to validate this algorithm. Treatment for thoracic spine fractures remains controversial. There's, there's no consensus on when surgery should be used and when non-operative treatment should be used. Operative interventions include posterior approach, anterior approach, and a combined anterior-posterior approach. Non-operative interventions um, is where we as physical therapists come in. Surgical intervention include those who have neurological compromise, um, those who don't get better with conservative treatment, uh, greater than 50% spinal canal compromise, and other indications that prevent non-operative treatment. 
Indication for non-surgical intervention include um, no neurological compromise, simple compression fractures, and stable burst fractures. There are a few classification systems used to help guide uh, clinical decision making. One that is has been used extensively is the AO system, which is based on three categories of compression, distraction, multi-directional with translation. And there's a new one, the thoracic lumbar injury classification system, which is similar to the AO system, yet brings in neurological status as one of the guidelines. Non-surgical intervention consists of usually bracing, medication, and PT of some sort. Benel et al. actually suggests manual therapy and exercise. The goal of bracing is to prevent failure of osteosynthesis, facilitate immobilization, and to ensure correct posture. Duration varies for bracing, and it can vary from 32 days to 9 months, but it is traditionally worn for 6 to 8 weeks. It depends on the type of fracture, and studies have shown that overuse will lead to muscle atrophy of the paraspinal muscles. Um, effectiveness of bracing still remains a little bit unclear, so more research needs to be conducted. Choice of drug treatment depends on the nature of the pain, the patient's age, as well as physical and mental health. Some medications include NSAIDs as well as centrally acting agents. If you look at this chart of medications here, Kim and Vaccaro came up with a couple of examples of medications used on vertebral compression fractures in the osteoporotic population. As mentioned previously, PT is going to consist of a multimodal approach, and our goals are to decrease pain, improve posture, improve thoracic spine mobility, strengthen the trunk extensors and lower limb muscles, improve trunk control, and patient education. Um, a few of the benefits from exercise and manual therapy are going to help reduce pain and impairment and increase physical function. Benel et al. suggested a multimodal PT intervention which includes manual therapy and exercise. So for manual therapy, they did postural taping, soft tissue massage, and PA springing. Note, however, that fractures must be stabilized before you actually conduct the PA springing. For exercise, you want recruitment of back extensors, which may lead to the better dynamic static posturing, reduce pain, and improve the patient's quality of life. Back strengthening may help reduce risk for further fracture in those with osteoporosis. The next two slides include a couple of examples that Benel et al. used in their study. In summary, more than 65% of spinal fractures do not cause recognizable symptoms and can commonly go undetected. Plain radiographs sometimes are not sufficient enough in detecting thoracic spine fractures and CT or MRIs must be used. Surgery should be reserved for those who have neurological compromise or those who do not improve with conservative treatment after two months, and conservative treatment should include bracing, medications, and specifically back extensor strengthening exercises. Clinical bottom line states that more research needs to be conducted on thoracic spine fractures, including research on radiographs, morphology, definition, classification, and treatment. Most of the studies included vertebral compression fractures on the osteoporotic population specifically. These are our references, and I hope you enjoyed our presentation on thoracic spine fractures. I hope you have a wonderful day.